to build the A-stable circuit and trigger it. With Before there was Hack a Week, there was the Dino Fab series of videos. This week we're going to go back in time and I'm going to show you a fuel injector tester that I built. This is one of the first videos I put up on YouTube. Welcome to Hack a Week. Hey, welcome to the Dino Fab Lab. Today I'm building some things with a 555 timer chip. This tiny little chip is very versatile. It was invented by Hans Kamenzin in 1970, and since then it's been used in a wide variety of devices. It's available just about anywhere where you can buy electronics. And if you do a Google search online, you will find tons of tutorials and circuits available for you to use. They come in three different versions. There's the 555 which is the 8-pin chip. There's a 16-pin version, which is two of these in one chip, called the 556. And finally, there's a quad version, four of these in a single chip, that's called the 558. These work in a few different ways, but the main two circuits you can build with them are the A-stable circuit and the monostable circuit. The A-stable circuit puts out a pulse width and continues to do so until it's turned off. The monostable circuit would put out a single pulse and then pause until it's triggered again. I'm going to build a device that uses both of these circuits, and it's a fuel injector tester. I work uh, at my day job as an auto mechanic, and sometimes you need to test fuel injectors. Fuel injectors are triggered by the computer in a car, and uh, it's a pulse width that's in microseconds. It ranges from maybe one and a half to ten microseconds, depending on what the engine demand is. I want to build one that I can hook up to a fuel injector and see just how it operates. Hook up a fuel pressure gauge and see how much it bleeds down to check the volume of each fuel injector. If there's a bad one, I'll know. So, let's get started in building this. Now this is how I usually start a project. I draw up a schematic, I write out a plan, do a little research, write up what it is I want to do. This is my maker handbook. And then my cat approves it for me. That's Seamus. The circuit I'm making today looks like this. There's a version of this available on my website also. But basically here we have the monostable circuit. That's going to get triggered by this little push button. And what this one will do is output a pulse one second long. This output pulse then gets fed into the A-stable circuit. The A-stable circuit will output a pulse that is 39 microseconds on and 32 microseconds off. These numbers are determined by these two resistors and this capacitor. Okay, I've breadboarded up the monostable circuit. I've added an LED right here so I can see what the output is because I don't have an oscilloscope yet. That's on my list of things that I must get. So when we push the button, we'll see what happens. And there's the LED lighting up for its one second duration. Now because this one has two resistors on this side of the circuit, it will time out regardless of the fact that I hold down the button. If it only had one resistor, it would continue to power the unit and it would keep doing the pulses again and again. So now that we have our monostable circuit built with a one second pulse output, we need to build the A-stable circuit and trigger it with this one second pulse. Okay, we're back with the A-stable circuit now built. We have the second chip in place. And we also have a N-channel MOSFET transistor, which will carry the load that goes to the injector. Um, you can drive, I think, 200 milliamps off from a 555. Anything more than that, you might damage the chip. So the injector, I'm not sure what it draws, but I know it's certainly more than uh, 200 milliamps. So I designed in a uh, n-channel MOSFET. So that switches on and off as per the output from the A-stable circuit. So now my one second pulse from the monostable circuit will drive the A-stable circuit. It will output a 39 millisecond on followed by a 32 millisecond off and it'll do this for a period of one second. 
which amounts to roughly seven pulses. If you do the math, it comes out to a little bit less than that, but if you count it, you can actually blink just about seven pulses. And there it is. Now I can alter the uh, pulse width if I want to by changing these resistors here and by changing this capacitor. Well, I've got my board done, the prototype board that is. I used uh, a program called Express PCB, and uh, I did this, this printed circuit board layout on that program. It's pretty nifty. It's a freebie. I'll post links on the uh, projects page on DinoFab to get to that. It's a free download, and they'll also make the circuit board for you. And then I uh, went along, put in all my components into the board, and... Uh, put a pink mark on all the traces as I did them and I used one of those Radio Shack prototype boards it's just full of holes and basically just took this little piece of paper taped it right to the board on the top and then just kind of flipped the paper back and forth and transferred everything to the board to see where my traces and all my components went and um, then spent two hours soldering this all up that seems like a lot of time for a small board but the reason being is on the back side all of the traces are done by hand with pieces of wire and jumpered with a with a soldering iron this gets a little tricky and i found the trick to it is when you want to jumper one dot to another is to cool off your soldering iron i use the kind that just has a little sponge uh, pad in the base i don't have a a temperature controlled one. That's another thing on my wish list along with the oscilloscope. The project's now inside the box. Got it all mounted up in there with a single screw holding it in place. We have the two LEDs in the top and the momentary contact switch. This one's the power LED, that one's for the pulse width. And now we'll put the screws in the box and uh, power it up and see how it works. All right, the printed circuit board has been mounted inside the enclosure. I have it connected to a 12-volt power supply, and instead of a fuel injector, I'm using a Bosch relay, which will simulate the coil inside the fuel injector. It's about the same load. Let's turn the power on. Now oh, there's my power light. Now we'll push the button and see what happens. How about that? We have a pulse going to that solenoid. You can hear it click as it turns on and off. And so there it is, a fuel injector tester built from two 555 timer chips and a few other components. Hey everyone, well here's my final entry in the 555 contest, my fuel injector tester based on two 555 timer chips. It uses uh, the monostable circuit and it also uses the A-stable circuit. The monostable circuit is on this side, it puts out a single pulse which goes to the A-stable circuit. The ACE table circuit is what outputs the pulse train through this MOSFET and to the fuel injector. 12 volts comes in here, runs through the circuit, and gets output there as per the circuit. So in the other videos you got to see the ins and outs of how all that works, and today I'm going to package this thing all up, take it up to my car, connect it up, and show that it works for its intended purpose. Alright, all packaged up. Nice labels on everything so we can see what uh, does what. All right, a quick demo on the bench here. Uh, the power's on. You can see the lights lit up. I've got uh, pigtail connectors for the fuel injectors, Molex type connectors. And I just make a pigtail for each type that I use. This is Asian. Uh, here's another one I made for German imports. I need to come up with a few for some domestics, but let's connect this one for now. We'll give it a quick check on the bench here. The pulse duration is set at one second. And it can also run for five seconds. Or if I switch this to uh, constant, if I hold the button down, I can go longer than five seconds. And there you have it. Let's go put it on a car now and see how it works. Hey, it's a beautiful sunny day here in North Carolina and I'm ready to test my fuel injector tester. I've got the fuel pressure gauge hooked up, I have the tester connected, and now we'll show you how this thing works. Okay, the fuel system is pressurized. You can see about 45 pounds in the gauge there. 
I have the injector tester set to a single pulse of one second. And when I push the button, you'll see the pressure drop as it bleeds off fuel and pressure into the injector I have connected. You know, that was about a 25 pound drop. Now what you would do is you would repeat this test with other injectors and compare them. And if they all show the same, then you know the injectors are in fair shape. Sometimes when a car has been parked for a long time, the injectors will get clogged up and this tool will help you determine which one needs to be replaced without having to pull them all out. This could also be used in the continuous mode to hook it up under a condition where you could bleed the fuel into a jar and measure the volume of fuel and balance the injectors that way if you were out for performance and wanting to have each injector delivering the same amount of fuel. Awesome! This thing really works. I just proved it right here on my own car. This is great. I had a lot of fun building this project. I hope you had a lot of fun following along with it. And I'm going to enter this in the 555 contest. If you're interested in that, it's www.555contest.com. Check it out. There's uh, the rules there, the deadlines for entry, and all that stuff. I learned so much building this one. I learned about 555 timer circuits. I learned about using Zener diodes to protect uh, MOSFETs. I learned how to use a MOSFET for switching. I learned about uh, capacitors to protect IC chips. And uh, I was even inspired to make my own printed circuit board for this thing and learned how to do that using a laser printer and transfer the toner, that whole technique. I was even inspired to make a 555 t-shirt. These are available on www.cafepress.com forward slash DinoFab. I'll post the links to all this stuff uh, in the video and you can check out my webpage www.dinofab.com for more projects in the future. I hope you visit often and have fun while you're there. Well, what's next? Well, what's next? What's next indeed? Well, shortly after that, Hack a Week was next, and you've been enjoying those videos all along. So, like I always say, till next time. I had a lot of fun building this thing. I learned a lot about the. Exactly.